What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is January 9th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video, I want to spend some time to ask a very important question. As Bitcoin grows as an emerging asset, have we been able to see whether or not it can serve as a global hedge for wealth in times of chaos and uncertainty? I think it's a very important and fun question to ask because it's a very important benefit for gold and silver as safe havens to be able to store your wealth. And it's important question to see whether or not Bitcoin can do the same. So we're going to be focusing on this as we go throughout the video right after our quick sponsor. Our sponsor for today's episode is Taxbit. The IRS recently released new forms in 2019 that require all taxpayers to attest to whether or not they traded cryptocurrencies, no matter if they made gains or losses. Taxbit automates your cryptocurrency taxes, enabling you to effortlessly track, calculate, and report your transactions. Easily connect your exchanges to securely sync your transactions and run them through Taxbit's tax engine. Generate your completed tax forms with a single click. Founded by tax attorneys and CPAs, Taxbit is the most trusted cryptocurrency tax solution. Get 10% off your tax plan today with a free trial using promo code DATADASH. And one last thing to note for those of you who may be interested, Taxbit is doing a small competition where they're giving away three tiered subscriptions to the Taxbit platform. So if you're interested in that, fill out the form down below, fill out your basic details, and after that, you can enter in for a chance to simplify your taxes this season. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the video, guys. Taking a look across the board of the market, we can see most cryptocurrencies are down over the last 24 hours here. However, this has been after a, an extremely strong week here for cryptocurrencies, where we've not only seen Bitcoin rally back up 8,000 with a high of 8,400, along with that as well with Ethereum back at 140. So this has been really positive. It's probably been one of the best weeks for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies alike in the last few months since back in October. Now, I want to go ahead and not so much focus, uh, you know, just on the price action itself, right? We obviously can see here this has been one of the better rallies that we've seen since, as I mentioned, back here in October when we had the news in China. But we can see here that we've gone from around 6,900 up here towards a peak around 84, 84, um, 84.50. So, I want to go ahead and talk not so much about the price, but why this happened. Now, we understand, guys, as we've talked about on the channel, there is, uh, in this world, things are not black and white. There is nuance in the world. There is a, a, the, the world is gray in this case. There's a lot of complexity and a lot of reasons something might go up or down. There's speculators. There's the pressure on the sell side from miners. Uh, there are people who are actually hedging their wealth. Uh, there are people using Bitcoin to transfer remittance payments who are either going to buy and sell on the other end, right? There's all kinds of different things uh, and reasons why people might be buying or selling Bitcoin and why a price might be at a certain range. But it's very interesting to see what's happened over the last week and to understand a very big piece of what's been going on in the sense of foreign policy in macro uh, kind of politics. And that is, or I would say geopolitics is the proper term. And that's the case of what's been going on in Iran and what's been going on between the United States and Iran. So as many of you might know, a couple of days ago at the start of the new year, I think around the second or third, we had the death of General Soleimani, which was one of the head generals of Iran. Uh, he was killed in a drone strike from the United States. And along with that as well, just over the last, I think, 48 hours, we saw retaliation from the Iranian military against US bases. And this was causing a lot of tensions. I mean, no matter where you stand on the issue, guys, this was bringing uh, the United States into certain levels of DEF CON, which is basically where you get uh, basically prepared to take excessive military action the further you go down on the DEF CON levels. So we were at a pretty tense moment uh, where, you know, again, a lot of different actors in the geopolitical world, a lot of governments, uh, and militaries were basically set to take excessive action. Now, taking that all into mind here, right? Even though there is a lot of hype, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, kind of overt fear, when in reality, it seems like things are now de-escalating. I want to go ahead and show a very interesting chart. And this came over from the team at Masari. I think they did a very good job of just summarizing. And I'm sorry, I, I wish I could have gotten a little bit more of an HD photo, but I think you guys can see it quite well. And it looks like my webcam is not getting in the way too much, probably just down here a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this. So this is a chart Masari put out about Bitcoin and the Iranian conflict. And it really maps out, out over the last week, or really less than a week here in the sense of... Uh, of time, really over the last six days from the moment that Soleimani was announced to be assassinated, 
uh, from where Trump had posted a tweet here that the U.S. will retaliate, that they were considering uh, bombing a set of different locations, uh, you know, not just military bases in the sense of retaliation. And I think it was up to the tune of the, the amount of people who had died during the Iranian conflict back a few decades ago. Uh, this is the time period where Iranian missiles had stricken U.S. bases, or at least the word was breaking out. I remember I was hearing about this pretty much right when it was getting out on social media. And then we also see as well here the desire from Trump to de-escalate when he made his statements the other day. So, again, putting politics aside, guys, I mean, I, I've told you guys kind of my opinions. You guys know I'm, I'm generally kind of libertarian. I, I don't want to get in another war. I don't like, I, I can enjoy the jokes and the memes about World War III, but I don't like war. War is a very gruesome uh, process, and, you know, I, I would like to see this end peacefully in this case, and hopefully we can come to some resolution. Luckily, no one was harmed in this, uh, this uh, conflict outside of Soleimani. But I want to go ahead and talk about the important question here. Is Bitcoin, in this case, serving as a hedge? Now, again, as I told you guys, things are nuanced in this world. Uh, th there's no specific answer, yes or no. But I will say that I've seen this before in Bitcoin, and it makes me very excited. This isn't the only time where we have seen Bitcoin specifically reacting in very short time periods with world events. We can see here over a multi-day period from Soleimani getting assassinated, from Trump mentioning that the U.S. would retaliate, that Iranians had stricken U.S. Uh, US bases near Iran and Iraq. And also with the de-escalation here, you can see that there are some pretty clear similarities here with Bitcoin serving in a sense, as a semi-hedge for people who might be wanting to get their wealth in a protective environment in case things did escalate, in case we did set into another war, where there may not just be Iran and U.S. conflict, it might be other actors getting involved. We have to think about it that way. So, considering that, and considering that it was a 21.7% move here in a matter of less than a week, of course, we've seen that with Bitcoin, but I think it is something noteworthy in this case. And it's not the only time we have seen this. And the fact, uh, if we take a look back in 2015, as many of you might recall, back during uh, the Greek financial crisis, where Greece was going through a very severe set of issues, the banks, uh, again, there's a lot of uncertainty riding throughout the EU and the state of the Greek economy. We can see here with this chart that Bitcoin actually moved quite, uh, quite well during the Greek bailout referendum, right? So as we started to see people, for example, wanting to pull their money out, uh, a lot of people as well were not being able to withdraw as much money from ATMs at the time. There was a lot of uncertainty and not only the sense of the Greek economy, but having your money in fiat, in euros in this case, being able to get access to cash. So a lot of people, if they had the opportunity, were starting to hedge their wealth. And even for those who weren't hedging their wealth, with global uncertainty, if Greek's economy were to weigh down other economies and spawn a domino effect, as many people feared about it, the time. Again, in hindsight, we can look back and maybe see that it was silly, but some people in this case were, were very worried about that with the EU and how its financial system works. So really not so much the EU, but the Eurozone in this case, the connections between the central bank of the ECB and also uh, also the, the use of the same currency in this case, right? So a lot of people had fear in that case, and because of that, we saw a very clear rise in Bitcoin here over really about a month here leading up to the referendum. Now, again, as we talked about before, there could be other factors at play here. But the key note here is that geopolitics is starting to showcase that it does have an effect on Bitcoin. Or you could word it in another way, that Bitcoin reacts to geopolitics. It reacts to uncertainty and chaos. And that's a very interesting way to put it. But I can tell you all, I think that, you know, we've, we've kind of, I think we've been in very peaceful times for the most part. If you look at the longer term picture over the last century, uh, from 1900 to the 2000s, uh, we have been able to enter into a much more peaceful time. But when there is uncertainty, when there is doubt, and when there is fear in either traditional monetary policy, the state of geopolitics, uh, you know, all kinds of different things that have to do with either global certainty or uncertainty, when we see global uncertainty, Bitcoin tends to react positively. And this is exactly what we've seen in other uh, different precious metals, right? We've said, well, I'm sorry, I'm not comparing Bitcoin as a precious metal, but as hedges. We saw gold picking up to relative highs here that we haven't seen all the way back since back here in 2013. 
continuing to set newer highs here, right? Setting highs from the previous ones that we'd set back here in September 2019. We saw the same with silver as well. Silver picking up into this fear here, right? We saw silver picking up very nicely here over the last few days and also selling off similarly to Bitcoin as we've seen tensions cooling down. That's the interesting thing to me. It would be one thing for this to be moving up during the times of uncertainty, but to see all three assets moving very similarly during a time when things are de-escalating. That is what I find fascinating. Again, it's not foolproof, guys, and I'd like to hear your opinion on it. I'm just trying to explain and showcase why I think this might be a significant thing to take into mind, to take into account the fact that uh, this connection that Masari brought up may be something we'd see more often. If we see uncertainty during election periods, if we see uncertainty around things like Brexit or certain geopolitical con uh, conflicts or uh, in, uh, you know insecurity in the sense of monetary policy, we are going to see buy side pressure come in. A great example I can think of uh, on more of a, a point of monetary policy, and I think something extremely relevant to uh, what we saw in Greece, is what we've been seeing in emerging markets. Though Bitcoin's price has had a lot of sell side pressure from miners, we have a, a lot of buyers coming in, some record volumes on exchange platforms like local Bitcoins where people are exchanging uh, their local currency for digital currency like Bitcoin to hedge their wealth. It's very exciting and it's very important as well. It's very exciting and it's very important as well to take into mind when we're analyzing Bitcoin in the long term. All right. So just wanted to toss this your way, guys. I hope you all find this video exciting and interesting. If you liked it, drop a like and leave a comment down below on what you think, whether you agree or disagree with me, guys. I want to get a discussion going with you all. That being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.